Hello everybody and welcome back. So we're back to the cockpit build. Nice and wood shop area. So we are going to work on the floor today. So I'm going to turn this piece of melamine into our floor that we can put the rudder pedals on and then we're going to make some slots at some point where the vertical panel on the back is just going to slot into and we will have a nice little, I guess, jig? No, just floor panel. All right, so the first bit of this is to mark it all up. So we need 16 inches wide, 48 inches long, which this is a four foot sheet, so that's already half done. So we need 16 inches wide, we're gonna have to mark it with a chalk line, and then we're gonna put two lines in it so that we can attach the Thrustmaster TPR pedals to it. And it's just gonna be a really simple bolt clamping system. But yeah, let's get started. So first bit is to mark it, and we'll use this guy. So we need to mark this at 16 inches wide. And 16 inches wide. That's 18. 16 inches wide. Yeah, one foot six is 18 inches. <laughs> it's not 16 inches. That is 16 inches. All right, so we are good on both of those. I now need to move my drink so that we don't get chalk all over it. Then we shall grab my chalk, which for some reason was hiding over here. Hopefully there is some chalk in it. Feels like there is. Definitely chalk. So, I'm going to put this right on the edge. Right at 16. We're going to take this. Put this right on the edge at 16. Pull it tight. Give her a little snap. Pop it off. And voila, we have a mark 16 inches wide. Yeah. Okay, next thing we do, we've got to cut this on the table saw all the way down. Uh, if you don't have a table saw, you can use a circular saw or even a hand saw if you needed to. I'm going to complete this line just freehand for now. All right, I need glasses. We gotta set the table saw height and get going. All right, I have safety glasses. The door has been closed. Let's set the table saw height. Exciting, I know. You wanna set it just above the height of the board you're going to cut. Best way to tell is to put the board next to it. Hold it down. Let's give ourselves about a quarter inch of clearance. That is good. Make sure it is off. Yep, now we gotta plug her in. And if you have a vacuum that attaches to your table saw, now's the time to plug it in. Do, do, do. A little more light. And away we go. This is clear, now we can start it up. Perfect. All 
That's now safe. Bit of melamine. Love that stuff, but yeah. All right, so now we need to take this. And we need to mark from, well, first we need to find our center, which is going to be four and an eighth from these, sorry, we need to make two lines, four and an eighth from the center. So, my actual number is a smidge under 16, so that means we need to go eight plus a sixteenth. That's our center. So from there, we need to go over uh, four and a quarter inches. Use the square. And we're gonna go over four and a quarter? Four and an eighth. Four and an eighth. We're gonna mark that. Gonna go the other direction. Measure four and an eighth. Mark that. Now, we're going to do this, actually we're gonna measure the distance between the two. That is eight and one quarter exactly, perfect. Now we're gonna do the exact same thing on the other side. That's gonna be eight and a quarter. Now we're measuring from the side that we did not cut. That is because this side is still square. So now we're going to measure over four and an eighth. And then do the same on the other side, four and an eighth. We need to essentially do the same thing with the chalk mark. That'll give us our line to work on. Eh, I don't really want to do it that way. That's a messy way of doing it. Very messy way. So we are going to be making this from 12 to 24 inches. So we're going to make a slot from 12 to 24 inches. That's whatever size width bit that I have, but at least a quarter of an inch because we're going to use quarter inch and then shim it with spacers. Okay, so here is 12 inches. And 24. And I'm still squaring it up with only this side that we did not cut. as well as this end piece. So we didn't cut that either. So 12 inches and 24. So let's connect the dots. Again, using this as a square, that is a essentially a witness to our marks being straight. It's 24. Is 12, our sanity check lines up. There's our box that we're gonna go in. And I might as well transfer my marks down. Uh, this'll work. So there's our distance. Get my square lined up. We're gonna make a line right there. <coughs> Oof, dusty in here now. Another line right there. Ooh, careful there. Keep it square. Come on, play nice. Okay. There's our line right there. Now, we're going to measure and make sure this is still 
eight and one quarter inches. Uh, it's a little skinny. That's okay. The drill bit is a little oversized. Now we're going to extend our line all the way through for both of them. Now, we need two things. One, I'm not just going to plunge cut this. That's a terrible idea with a router. So we're going to grab a drill bit. We're going to drill two holes in here. We're then going to take the router, run it all the way down. I'm not going to freehand this. We're actually going to use the square. That can go on the side. We're just going to clamp it down with some clamps. And we'll run it like that. So I've got to go get the drill bit and the right, sorry, the drill and a drill bit. So. I'll be back in just a second. All right, screw on and my bits. Mm, yeah. I'm going to twist this that way. I'm going to get my router. Because I need to measure or just look and see what size this is. And we can probably just measure that. It would be smart just to take it out and measure the size, but this is a half inch router. So we're going to take a half inch drill bit and drill our pilot holes. Now for something this big, we actually want to use a center punch. So I'm gonna grab that too, and a hammer. All right, center punch required. We are going to punch that. Punch that. Now we're going to drill a pilot hole. Let's go with a, looking for an eighth. Let's go with an eighth. Cool. Make sure we're not going to drill into our bottom board and straight through. our pilot hole. Now we're going to step up from an eighth. Oh, let's go quarter and then half inch because half inch is huge. Half inch is gigantic. So I'm going to do a quarter inch. One other thing I should have mentioned. If you don't want to get blowout on the back, it'd be good to prop this up on something like two by fours. Then you won't get so much blowout. So much before we go to the big bits, I might want to do that. I do. All right. So to use a two by four on the back, two by four on the front. Now you do have to make sure that it's A, underneath the holes, and B, somewhere you can actually stop it. Cool. Uh -huh. Just shoved a sliver straight in my finger when I clapped my hands. Ow, that hurt. Don't clap your hands in a wood shop. The half inch mega drill bit. Wow, that's big. Are you sure that's what I need? That's what I need. Good Lord, that's big. I don't use half inch a lot. Big. So ideally you would want to clamp this down at this point. And we will, because we're just going to route her exactly where she stands. So we're gonna scoot this over to the edge. 
I'm gonna grab two clamps. We're gonna clamp here and here. All right. And these clamps, like so. Now you are, unless you have a two by four fully underneath this, I'm on the edges, which is not great, but will work. I don't see any other non screwed together, easily accessible two by fours. So we're going to make this work. It's actually quite sturdy. So excuse you, here we go. Or not, too big. That one is way too big. So we are going to go up to three eighths. That will do a little better. Now make sure you get all the way through because when you hit that two by four down there, it's gonna feel weird. Now for the big boy. Here we go. Nope. All right, I gotta get a stepped drill bit because these are not working for me. So this shows me I've been doing too much metal work lately. We could have gone directly to the half inch but because of my mistake, we must use a stepped drill bit so that we may stay centered in our hole. If you guys don't know what a step drill bit is, it's a drill bit with steps. Nice and simple. I've definitely been doing too much metal work lately. So we're going all the way up to half inch which is honestly not that deep in. So. The hole's now chamfered, which is really what we wanted. Okay. Try that one. Perfect. Not perfect. Tater. And I believe made it way more than just through it. So we're good there. So before we continue on, I'm going to check and make sure we've drilled all the way through and that our router bit fits. Both of which are kind of important details. Okay, that is all the way through. I'm actually gonna scoot it in slightly that way we can see the router bit when she goes through. Clamp it back up. Twist, 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 twist. Nice and tight. Okay. That is it on the drill bits for now. We are gonna need them again later. Don't go far. We need on the corners to pre-drill so that we can screw it into the wood without splitting it all. Okay. The router does fit. It's a little tight, but it fits. We are going to set it super shallow. 
we're going to do some small passes to make sure we get a good surface finish. Okay, you are plug in way back here. Another splinter? Geez, I seem to be getting them all day. All right, router plugs in there. We have our depth set at pretty shallow. And instead of freehanding this like I was about to think I was gonna do, we are going to put the square on there and clamp it down. So, he's gonna go like this. I'm gonna put this in the hole. We're gonna touch the edge. Oh, that's perfect. This is exactly on the edge. So, all I have to do, clamp it down with this excessively large clamp. Make sure we are lined up, both touching on this side and square on that side. Not square anymore, when I tightened it, she moved. Go. Good, good, good. Ideally, we would put a second one. Yeah, we'll do that. More of a cursory afterthought, but still a good idea. I'm starting to run out of good clamps. All right, clamp that there. Now, you always start this in the hole. We're going pretty slow. And essentially, we're just gonna keep pressure on it, keep straight, and as long as that doesn't move on the end, we're still good. Not bad, not great, but not bad. Let's grab the dust collector, cause that's dusty. Very dusty. I don't really have a way to attach it, which is why I didn't grab it in the first place. Attack of the hose. But I think with how simple that is, we'll be able to just hold it with one hand. Now to plug it in. <coughs> of course I'd stick something on the cord. All right, well, let's see if I can plug it in over here. Nope. Okay, let's clean up my mess and continue. All right, so we are going to set this next pass on the full depth. plays nice. Now you can either feel or measure the depth. I prefer the, me well, measuring way, but the feel way is quicker. You just need to unplug it. Oops. All right, here we go.
Well. All right, that's an okay hole. Let's make the next one better. But same process, we've got our hole. We're going to align, verify, set our guide, and go. Now this is a half inch and we're only using a quarter inch bolt, so that gives us a lot of play left and right. We'd rather not have to have that play if you actually have the right size bit. It would be recommended to use that. It should be the right place, and I can do some fine tuning with that one. Put this in the hole. Oh no, that's nowhere close. Why is that not close? That's not good. Measure. That is eight inches, not eight and a quarter. Okay. If we shift her over half an inch, well, quarter of an inch. We're still nowhere close. So, good thing we checked. It's going to be right there, offset just a smidgen from the center. Right there. Let's put this in. Yeah. Make sure we are square. Keep our square, tighten, verify square, it's not, there, tighten so this doesn't move. Now we need to raise this up considerably because taking the full pass, not going to happen. And away we go. Go a quarter inch deeper, run it again. That's so close. I think we just want to, ooh, warm. Go all the way down, but we need enough cutting material that we will both cut all the way and not go too far. Dust myself off. Give you guys some horrific sounds. 
unplug and put away the toys. Now, we have one thing left to do. Pick out our screws and pre-drill. So, I'm going to be using the almost out of, no, I'm going to be using these one and three quarter inch screws. So, before we've even started, I noticed a very small snag in our plan. We already have screws going from the base plate on the end this way. So we're gonna have to move the end holes in a couple of inches, but that we're gonna have to do later. We're gonna have to do the back first. So we're going to align this exactly where we want it, sit on this pre-drill, put the screws in, then we're going to, actually first we've gotta put this on because it's gonna be a pain to get our fingers in there afterwards. So, first thing, you want to get probably a quarter inch more than whatever material you're using, maybe half an inch at most. I don't have those unfortunately, so we are going with two washers on the bottom. Actually, we're going with a lot more than two washers. And we need to pull this off to the side so that we can reach underneath and put it up. So I want to get it so that the threads are on the bottom. Normally you would do this down, but we need to be able to grab this with something like a pair of pliers because once it goes down there, it's going to just free spin. That's a bad thing. And well, we can't really get underneath this very easily unless we tip the entire thing and later we don't want to be doing that. So there are things that we can 3D print that will essentially hinge around and act like a locking nut that'll pull it up. So we'll print those later and design them later. But for now, we're just going to use nuts. And so think kind of like a bicycle seat, um, that kind of a fastener. We're going to use washers galore on my way too long bolts. That's the right length. I need three, six washers. Wow, these are way too long. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so those are my washers. Now we need to put the pedals on. Do, do, do. Then we put a washer. We want these pretty much as low as we can get them, so that way we won't kick a sharp edge. That would hurt. If we have to, padding them with washers is not a bad idea. Not the best one, but not a bad idea. We do still need something to grab on up top. Alright. Put my washer over there. Grab my nut. This would be a lot harder with it completely fixed. Okay, come on. Washer didn't want to go on. Okay, so you will have to manually square them because we've got this extra little play in the bottom. We're gonna have to put this where we want it, sit in the chair, and then zero it the first time. Afterwards, it's just gonna be a pain to adjust. So we're going to do it the first time. Set this where we want it. Real cursory. We're gonna put the seat back on. Not fully attached, but we do need to calibrate it. So we put these where we normally sit. I don't think I sit that low, do I? It's a little too low. We're gonna try position two. Uh, it's way too high. This is gonna be different with the seat or with the plate there. Um. Okay. 
That's here. Ooh, boy. Make sure you hold it or clamp it, do something. Because going knock to knock, you're going to need anchor. It was low enough it didn't spill. Cool. Yeah. We are going to need to push decently hard. Now, that's too close for me. Slide it out just a smidgen. All right, now we make sure we tighten these guys. Kind of hard. Yeah. At least with enough torque. Okay, your square, your square. It's full right, that's full left. Now it's two four. Okay, I think this is pretty close to where I want it. We'll be able to adjust them later, it's just gonna be harder. So, square them up. Give it one quick. Yeah, I think that's where I want it. So now we've got to remove the seat, put it in the back, tighten these a bit. Yeah. With all this play, it's actually pretty hard to tell where it is. Drop me a mic. Lost the clip. Never done that before. Square up everything, put it exactly where we want it. Right after we tighten that. So, we're going to tighten this down real quick. Ooh, there's an idea. Maybe we could hinge the back. That way we can get underneath it. Maybe later. Okay. For now, Let's tighten this down. Oh, we might not need to get underneath. This is actually tightening surprisingly nice. As long as the bolt is not spinning, there it goes. Now it starts spinning. If the bolt spins, you need more pressure. Either you can grab the nut with a pair of pliers, or the bolt with a pair of pliers, or use something else like your fingers, like I'm currently doing. So if you don't tighten it down enough, it will slide back as you use it. Question is, how much? is enough. Because if you over tighten it, the wood will start to collapse. All right, I've got both of them spinning. That is surprisingly stable. I can't manually move it. So that's actually pretty good. We are now going to square everything, drill the back only so far. Square, square. Sit on the back and drill it. Now these are little one inch screws that I found when we pulled them out of that board. So I'm going to use these. Since all the force is going to be that way, or down, we're gonna have a lot of weight. I don't think those front ones are critical. You can put them in. I'm gonna hold off for now because that means more drilling. But I'm going to assemble real quick and do a test fit. A 
we will see everything sits together. I had nuts and bolts. On the other side. Cool. And the nuts and bolts are up there. So, all right, so rudder paddles feel great. They could probably go out a little bit, but that's what the adjustability is for. We're gonna do that later. Next, I'm going to attach the stick. Uh, come here. It's a little too taut. So we're gonna have to actually pull that off the USB. Yeah. And now we can move it around as needed. So this is actually going to be routed probably down and around and behind. Probably down and around and behind the seat, all the way up to the front, and we'll put some USB cables up there. Or just snake it around the floor, because it's kind of out of the way. But the way we calibrate this, that's actually really high now. I think I've got a shorter tube. But essentially, we're going to calibrate this the same way, no matter how long this stick is. We bring it all the way back till it's just a smidgen shy of the seat. Bring it forward, and that's where we want it. Because we want it as close as we can. Maybe not as close, maybe a little bit further, because this is really high now. So we want it about there. Let's look at the diagrams real quick. So uh, I had a quick consult with the documents, and it says 23 inches from these boards where they intersect the floor. So we're going to measure 23 inches. Holy shice kebabs. That's way up there. Is that really? Is that really where you want it? Do I really want it that far? I can't reach that far. Okay, we'll put it out as far as I can comfortably reach. It's about there. I can still do all this pretty comfortably. That's still far, like really far. I'd rather it's somewhere here. Now I probably will be shortening it. Well, maybe not, because I do like it this long for formations. But this is really long. That should be fine. Eh, maybe not, it's too far. I'm short, I got short arms. It's almost the same width. If I would have continued all those down, I might have been able to create an adapter for it, but this is good here. So I'm just putting it where I like it. My toy. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to measure exactly in the middle. And the offset of these is seven three quarter. Nothing's eight inches on this thing. Nine and an eighth, really? All right. So we're going to go four and three quarters from half, so eight, twelve and three quarters, about there. That is three and three eighths, that is three and just about three eighths, smidgen over, verify square, three and a half. Three and a half square. So I'm going to just drill and put screws in. Easy enough, super simple, not too complicated. We could do bolts, but screws are here and this is easy. <laughs> we need the drill. Yes, you would normally want to pre-drill this. That did walk a smidgen on me. Okay. I need to go get one more of these short screws. Before I can finish it. Oh, found one. <laughs> Love when that happens. Hello. I gotcha. So, 
these need to be placed diagonally. Out it comes again. So again, you can place all four, but two will do as long as they are diagonal. This thing has little rubber feeties so it doesn't move. The only problem with that is that when we tightened it, it tilted up. So this is still square. And this guy. that in there. Now if you put it too tight, the metal will warp and bend. So all we want so that it doesn't move. And our stick is now in place. Cool! Now we need to put this on, make sure it all still fits and plays nicely. Alright, pretty sure she's all good, so we're going to put these, the nut and washer back on. These are just a safety precaution to make sure my seat never actually falls out when these pins do. I'm not going very far if it does, but I'd still rather it not. It would be ideal to not have to fall out of my seat. Or have my seat fall. Okay. Now that everything is in place, I like that. That's neat. Feels good. We can fly from up here. We can fly from down here. It all depends on how you're feeling that day and we need a throttle quadrant. That's probably gonna be next. We need the throttle quadrant. All right. Well, thank you guys for joining me. I hope you guys enjoyed this video on putting in the floor and attaching everything. If you didn't, let me know. If you did, like, subscribe, and we'll see you guys in the next episode.